Hello everyone, my name is Samantha Cool. I'm a certified oncology esthetician here in Austin, and I have a business called Save a Face and Body, and I am also a proud member of Cancer Rehab and Integrative Medicines Therapist Group. And so I've been asked to talk with you today about skincare and lymphedema and how those two um, topics are sort of interrelated and the importance of skincare ultimately when you are dealing with lymphedema. And so the first thing I want to tell you is lymphedema by its very nature is uh, it's a condition of swelling, of inflammation that creates a tightness in the skin around it and also stresses the skin um, by doing so. And the skin barrier can become compromised there are uh, opportunities for infection to enter the body through small fissures or tears in the skin. And so what we are really wanting to do is to keep the skin supple, hydrated, and protected from the risks that that involves. So just to give you a little bit of information as far as tips and things that you can do, there are a number of things that you can do to help your skin get through that process. And one of the very first uh, and most obvious things is to keep your skin clean and dry. So cleansing daily using a gentle cleanser and making sure that you get the areas that you are cleaning completely dry is an easy way to help your skin um, stay intact and, and keep the barrier healthy. Moisturizing your skin at least once a day, and my preference would be that you moisturize more than once a day um, with a moisturizer that's emollient, and we'll talk a little bit more about emollient moisturizers down the road here. So moisturizing your skin at least once a day is really helpful. Um, cleaning any kinds of cuts or scratches or grazes that you might have on your skin in that area immediately with um, obviously clean water and then making sure that you've got some sort of gentle soap or cleanser, putting an antiseptic cream on the area and keeping it protected is helpful and also really important. Protecting your skin from the sun. We all know that we have to do that anyway. When you are dealing with lymphedema and your skin is compromised in those areas, keeping the sun at bay is even more important. One thing that you need to know about uh, sunscreen is you are looking for physical sunscreens that are mineral based. You do not want to use a chemical sunscreen on your skin. You want to use physical sunscreens that are mineral based. The sunscreen will feel thicker, it will be more protective, it will stay on longer, and it actually creates a physical barrier between your skin and the harmful rays of the sun. So physical mineral based sunscreen making sure that you're applying that several times throughout the day is really helpful and important. Um, in addition to that, there are now some really great options for sun protectant clothing if you are not familiar with those. And that's an easy way to throw something on that's gonna cover you and uh, you don't have to necessarily be worrying about reapplying things all day long. So sun protectant clothing is also a really good idea. Something that you might not think about is insect repellent and keeping your skin free from insect bites because if you're anything like me when I have an insect bite, I scratch myself to the point of madness and definitely do some damage to my skin barrier. So because we are trying to avoid that, any way that you can keep bites at bay would be um, very helpful. So uh, being considerate of the fact that you you don't want to get bitten and however that might work for you to, to prevent that is a really good idea. Avoiding things like hot baths and aggressive scrubs and washcloths is another really good idea for the areas where you are dealing with lymphedema. Um, heat dries out the skin. When the skin is dry, it becomes much more fragile and susceptible to tears. So what that means is if you bathe or if you shower, Keep the water tepid. Um, keep the time frame down. Don't you know submerge yourself in a bathtub for 30 minutes. Just get in and out as quickly as you can. Keep the water tepid or lukewarm. Um, avoid using things like harsh wa washcloths. Sorry, um, any kind of loofahs or sponges. 
whenever possible, just use your hands to apply products and to cleanse. They're the most gentle tools that we have. If you can avoid extremes of temperature um, that might dry your skin out, that would be, you know, being in a really hot climate, being in a really cold climate, being in a really windy climate. Um, any of those things can be helpful, although sometimes not quite as easy to make changes in as some of the other things we've talked about. Trying not to wear tight clothing or jewelry. Those things can create pressure points and um, pressure points can, when the skin is compromised, again, cause problems with the integrity of the skin. So trying to make sure that you're not wearing any kind of tight clothing or jewelry. If you've got swelling in the legs, avoid sitting or standing for long periods of time. Um, that would be helpful. Don't have injections or have blood drawn or blood pressure checked or anything like that on the side where you have your lymphedema or where you're dealing with it whenever possible. Um, you know, keep the affected limb free and clear of anything that's going to puncture it or in any way break that skin barrier and, and affect that integrity. So those are sort of the do's and don'ts. Um, one of the things I wanna to talk to you about a little bit more is moisturizing your skin. And that's a really important point because keeping the skin barrier moisturized, hydrated and protected is more than half the battle. But moisturizers are not moisturizers are not moisturizers. There are all kinds of moisturizers and most of us really don't know what to look for and what the difference is. First thing I can tell you is avoid moisturizers that have fragrance or alcohol in them at all. So plain Jane is what we're looking for. We don't, we want it to only have natural scents. We don't want it to have any kind of coloring or perfumes or alcohols at all. Um, those are things that will dry out the skin. And again, we don't want to dry out the skin or make it sensitive, any more sensitive than it already is in the areas where you're dealing with the lymphedema. So some, some names that you might recognize that have emollient moisturizers would be Eucerin, Lubriderm, Cetaphil, CeraVe, Aveeno. Those are all lines that you can get at your local pharmacy that are pretty well known to most of us. The CeraVe is a product line that is most often given out by dermatologists or sold by dermatologists and quite often they'll put them in your sample bags when you leave. Um, it is not going to be something that you can get at every pharmacy, but there are some that will have them and you can certainly get them from your dermatologist. So if you have any additional questions about anything uh, that I've just listed off, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to give you more info. In addition to that, I carry my own line of products called Hale and Hush. Um, the product line is was created for sensitive skin. And for people that are going through oncology related issues, it is oncology safe. So if you have any interest in samples from my line, I'd be more than happy to get those for you. Another point on the moisturizing um, topic is just understanding the importance of knowing what your skin is like to begin with. Before you decide on a moisturizer, do you have skin that is in good condition, normal condition? Do you have skin that has become dry and flaky? Has it surpassed that point and now it's dry, flaky, and possibly even scaly? All of those things matter when it comes to how you're going to hydrate your skin and what kind of moisturizer would be best for you to help prevent any further issue as you deal with lymphedema and its effects. So that's something where, you know, if you have skin that's in good condition, primarily good condition, you can just simply moisturize several times a day. If it is dry and flaky, then we get into a, an environment where we need to add some sort of really gentle natural exfoliant to help with the flakiness so that the skin can actually absorb the moisturizer that you're using. And if it's scaly, if it's become beyond flaky and is now scaly, then we look at other enzyme or other products, excuse me, like gentle enzymes to help break down um, the, the scaliness and the built up skin so that we can get again, the emollient ingredients through the moisturizers into the skin barrier and on top of the skin barrier to help hydrate and protect the skin. So those are all things that um, we can talk more about if you have questions and would like to reach out to me about your particular uh, situation, I would be more than happy to talk with you. 
Everything that we've chatted about today or that I've mentioned um, will be on a resource sheet that will be uh, sent to you in addition or that you'll have access to in addition to this quick presentation. And I'll just leave, you know, leave with my lasting thought, which is everybody's skin is different. Everybody's journey with their skin is different. And lymphedema presents some unique and unusual um, challenges that can be prepared for and um, taken care of as long as you understand how to do that and how your skin fits into that process. So um, please let me know if I can help and I hope that this information has been helpful to you on some level. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.